Starting in section 6.4, we're going to be learning about special products. So there are some binomials that when you multiply with another binomial, it will create what we call a special product. So one of those is called the perfect square trinomial. So perfect squares, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're going to take just a few minutes and look at a couple of the examples from the book in section 6.4 to understand what these are going to look like. Now at first glance, we see, oh, w plus 4 is inside parentheses, and we have a square outside the parentheses. So we just apply that square to everything inside the parentheses because that's what we learned in another section in chapter 6, right? Wrong. So in the other section, what was inside parentheses was a monomial. What do we have inside this set of parentheses? It's a binomial. We have more than one term. In this case, we have two terms. So in the other section, when we had to apply this exponent to each part inside the parentheses, that was a monomial. It might have had several pieces, but there wasn't a plus or a minus sign in there. There weren't more than one term. It wasn't more than one term. But in these, each of these has two terms. So when, it is, when the expression that's inside the parentheses is a binomial or larger, what you have to do is a little different. So looking at our first one, if we have w plus 4 squared, what we're actually going to do is have w plus 4 times w plus 4. We're taking everything that's inside the parentheses and multiplying it by itself. So we're going to come up with a binomial square, meaning that we have two binomials and they're exactly the same. Now we know how to go ahead and distribute out this problem, okay? So w times w equals w squared, and then w uh, times the 4 will be a plus 4w, and then again, we have another 4 times a w, which will give us another 4w, and then 4 times 4 is 16. Sorry, that's a little squished there. So we have w squared plus 4w plus 4w plus 16 um, on the very end. So we're going to go ahead and work through these, and then we'll come back up and see what pattern we're supposed to recognize from this. So on this one, again, we have 3x minus y in our set of parentheses. So 3x minus y times 3x minus y. So again, whenever we have a binomial that has a square outside, that has an exponent of 2, we're rewriting that binomial two times. And then we're going to use our distribution in order to multiply those binomials together. So 3 times 3 is 9, x times x is x squared, and then we have the 3x times the negative y, which would be a negative 3xy, and then again we'll have a negative y times a 3x, which again will be a negative 3xy, and a negative y times negative y equals a positive y squared. So again, we're just taking this first term and distributing it to each term in the second set, then taking the second term and doing the same thing. So let's do our last one. We'll do a fraction together. So we're going to rewrite this as y plus 1 fourth times y plus 1 fourth. So y times y equals y squared. And now we're multiplying y times 1 fourth. So isn't that just going to be 1 fourth y? And then our second one is going to be 1 fourth times y, which will be another 1 fourth y. And then 1 fourth times 1 fourth for our last one. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 4 times 4 is 16. 
So don't let the fractions fool you too much because remember it's all multiplication and multiplying fractions is very simple. Now what we've done, the two steps that we've taken is taken um, our, what we're going to see in the book, this binomial square, and we expanded it out for each of these. So we wrote both sets of parentheses and then we used our distribution to go ahead and expand everything that's inside those parentheses, multiply everything together. Now remember what I said about these middle terms. What's going to happen with all these middle terms? So we're going to get, actually, let me use a, a, a black marker because I want to, I want you to see a pattern with these. So that's our goal in these special products. So when we, when we combine these middle terms here, we'll end up with w squared plus 4 plus 4 is 8. So we have 8 w and then plus 16. Okay, so we just combine those middle two terms. And what's going to happen on the second one is the same thing. We're going to look and see that these middle two terms will combine. So we're going to have 9x squared and then a negative 3 and a negative 3 is a negative 6. And then we're going to have x, y. So we bring those along. And then our last one is a positive y squared. Now on the bottom, it's going to be a little bit different because it's fractions and now we're adding and subtracting fractions. But the nice thing about this is the denominators are already the same. So just remember, when you're combining these like terms, 1 plus 1 is 2. If the denominator is already the same, it stays the same. So you're going to end up with 2 fourths. And we can uh, reduce that 2 fourths y to 1 half. So we're going to end up with a y squared plus one half y plus one sixteenth. Now, if you wanted to write that as two fourths, you're more than welcome to. That's up to you if it just helps you see things better. But typically when we write fractions, what do we do? We always put them in lowest terms. So just keep that in mind. Now, the pattern that I would like everyone to see is Whenever we end up with um, the, the trinomial here, we notice that the first term in this trinomial is the first term squared in our binomial. And then our last term is the last term squared. So w squared, 16. w times w, 4 times 4. And what is our middle term? Our middle term is in this case the last term plus the last term. So 4 times 4 gets us the 16, but 4 plus 4 is going to give us the 8. So let's see if that holds true in our next one. So here we have our coefficient is on the front and we don't have one on the back, so just keep that in mind. But 3 times 3 is 9, x times x is x squared, and then y times y is y squared. And how do we get this 6? Well, a 3 and a 3. So the 3 plus the 3 gives us the 6, and the 3 times the 3 gives us the 9. What about our last one? y times y equals y squared. A quarter times a quarter equals a sixteenth but a quarter plus a quarter equals a half. So that's the pattern that we want to recognize. And the reason why this is called a special product is a lot of times if we can recognize that pattern, we don't even have to do the distribution. We can just look at it and know exactly what that pattern is. So let's go through it again. The first term is going to be squared and the last term is going to be squared. The last term, because it's squared, the last term will always be positive. So if you look, all of these last terms are a plus 16, a plus 16th, a plus y squared. They're all positive. How we get the middle term, the middle term is going to be the coefficient. So if it's on the front or the back, it's going to be that plus itself or that times 2. 
So we'll do another video that gives another couple examples real quick.